these games have been tightly contested as Cambage will tip things off against McCowan. And the Las Vegas Aces, who have the number three ranked offense, will start with it first. Vegas has lost two in a row. They're the only team in the league without a three-game losing streak this season. They look the way of Wilson, who was an all-star captain. In just her second year, she has been so impressive, coming off an injury that held her out of eight games earlier this season. We can see straight away what their intentions are offensively as well to try and get the ball in the paint. As you say, see big Liz Cambridge... She averages one and a half blocks a game. She's already got her first. She goes right at the rookie McCowan. Nice defense from Tierra McCowan, who really from the beginning of the season to the end, it has been just remarkable watching the growth of the third overall pick. Dupree steps into a long two. She's got the foul. Well, that's a great start offensively for Dupree. She just brings that calmness to the team. They'll be looking at her to be their veteran leader here today. At times this season, we have seen Pokey Chapman give Dupree rest in games that the Fever either had in hand or got behind. She played 36 minutes of the 40-minute game on Sunday in Seattle. Now there's Burke, the rookie, coming up with a steal, and this is why she's into the game her late. She's been a problem on defense, and Indiana's got the first five. Well, she's really taken this opportunity being injected into the starting lineup for the past two games. And she just brings that extra length that deceives the opposition. Cambage spinning by McGowan, the finish on the other side of the rim. And for the size of Liz Cambage, really impressive agility, dexterity down there in the post. And step out and shoot the three as well. She has the entire package, was runner up in the MVP race a year ago. Here's Burke backing her way in, uses her size, that left hand off target. Jackie Young right to the rim, left that one short, Wheeler with a rebound. Fever doing a good job of picking up the pace here. That'll play in their favor as the game progresses. McCowan taking Cambage to the rim. Big T said, anything you can do, I can do better. That's going to be a great matchup to watch. Here McCowan, who wouldn't have dreamed of putting that move up earlier in the season. And one thing we talked about earlier in the year, she went against a lot of the league's premier bigs and oftentimes felt some rookie moments in those. But you're starting to see the byproduct of this now. I mean, that is a confident look of a player who is in her third or fourth or fifth year against one of the top defensive players in the league. I mean, her, like you said, she just looks more comfortable out there in this second half of the season. I mean, she's got players like Candace Dupree talking to her, Natalie Achama, who, who have helped her out a lot as the season has progressed. Coaching staff did a great job developing her game, but I, she, you can sense that she feels that she belongs out there now. She's coming off that 22-point, 19-rebound masterpiece in Seattle, and there is Wheeler who hits a three, and you see that sarcastic kind of look to the sky. She had missed 12 in a row from distance before this one. Two points in each of her last two games, a very good sign early for Indiana. She didn't hesitate on that defenseman under the screen of McCowan, and she just knocked that down. Great start. And Beige goes back to work. McCowan made that difficult. Well, there aren't many players in the league who you could say are near an even-to-even -even matchup in terms of size as Liz Cambage, and McCowan would be one of them. It's going to be really fun to watch those two go to work in the post. Tiffany Mitchell, a three. We have Cambage at 6'8", and McCowan at 6'7". near the top of some of the strongest players in the league as McBride off the screen. She is a lethal three-point shooter. McBride struggling a little bit. And their loss to Minnesota had just four points. And Vegas has lost two in a row. They've not dropped three straight all season. The Beers group is the only group who that is true of. It's McKellen right back in the post. I said it at the start. Every possession has to involve McCowan somehow, whether it's a direct pass into her, either she's setting a screen, drawing two or three defenders. Everybody on the perimeter has to be ready to knock down that open shot. Tamara Young getting the start for Kelsey Plum as Bill Lambeer used to go a bit bigger. 
Sabir, who is expensive and that highly decorated NBA career with Pistons and coached Detroit Shock to three championships. With New York Liberty, seemingly always a contender. Young inside, an athletic move to get there, but there's the presence of McCowan once again. Dupree. Shiva doing a great job of making sure they're contesting every shot as if the camera young knocked down that too, and they will be okay with that shot. And got that mismatch on Erica Wheeler. Wheeler for what she did at the beginning of the year, slumping compared to her own standards in the last five or so games. Dupree fading, can't get the roll. Cowan battling down there with Pam Beige, and McBride pulled down the rebound. Haven't seen a whole lot of Asia Wilson just yet. They look right her way, and they're booked to take it away. And that's one of the reasons why swarming defense by the Indiana Fever. Wheeler steps into a long two. Not the right shot to take at that time by Erica Wheeler. That's a shot you can get any time throughout the offense. So probably needed to kick that ball on, get some more movement. Here's Jackie Young to the rim, draws the foul, and the former Indiana Miss basketball will head to the line when we return. But it's the Fever who have jumped out to a six-point lead from Bankers by Wheeler. In support of WNBA Breast Health Awareness, visit WNBA.com slash assess risk and put awareness into action to reduce your risk of breast and ovarian cancers. WNBA.com slash assess risk for more. So those flashy fever jerseys, that dark gray with the pink, which then got optioned off for charity. Indiana was so good defensively as we take a look there at Muffet McGraw on the left, that's the head coach of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and Kathy Engelbert, we will hear from her at halftime. The new WNBA commissioner in her first season. We're sitting here courtside. It is inspiring women nights. At the field house, and McGraw is the honoree, and those two, of course, have a past. Engelbert at Lehigh mm -hmm. was coached by Muffet before she got to Notre Dame. Two-time NCAA champion. And she definitely has inspired me over these past 12 months just listening to what she has to say. We've got three players, former players on the floor here tonight. Candace Dupree spinning on Hamby the touch. That is classic Candace Dupree right there. Jackie Young is one of those players out of Princeton in Indiana, was Miss Indiana basketball and won. A state title on this floor in 2016. Cambage drew the foul on Wheeler. Wheeler not looking too happy about being called for that foul, but see the replay here of Dupree. Just that nice little spin to the baseline, spin back to the middle. She's mastered that little hook shot. Dupree, by the way, is closing in on fifth all time in the league scoring chart. She's currently sixth. She's looking to move into fifth this season. To do it, she'll need to average 15 points per game to catch Katie Smith, who we just saw here at Bankers Life Field House. She's now the head coach of the Liberty. Dupree's off to a nice start. She's got five points tonight. This is what the Aces do, though. They live at the line. No team shoots more free throws than Las Vegas. Bambi trying to take it away from Dupree. They'll wrestle for it. Candace gets it back. Shot clock down to seven. Mitchell on the fake lines up a two. Tiffany Mitchell, you know, one of the stats, stats that, uh, that stand out to me is that Indiana is number one with percentage from the two-point range, from the mid-range jump shot. They are number one percentage-wise. Candace Dupree obviously has a huge part to do with that as Mitchell dips inside and the roll. Nicely done, Tiffany Mitchell. You see her just cradle that ball in her arms just to protect it as she's weaving through the defensive players. Las Vegas is the top defensive team in the league. The Fever shoot 57% here in the first quarter. 
There's Cam Beige on McCowan, the matchup of the Knights. McCowan wins that one, and then a whistle on the loose ball going against Las Vegas. What McCowan is doing a better job now is as the player is shooting or driving, she's staying vertical, whereas in the first half of the season, she would always try and take a swipe at those layups or the shots and end up with a foul, but now you can see her staying vertical, putting the pressure on the offensive player to have to make those tough shots. I think that's a part of coaching that you've really seen this year because her block numbers because of that have actually come down. She's mm -hmm. attempting less blocks as Mitchell gets inside. And Tiffany Mitchell like a spark here early for Indiana. But McCowan has been a lot more disciplined, forcing tougher looks, not drawing the foul. Indiana's been able to keep her in the game because of that. You hear the coaches yelling out to rebound because that generally is what happens when you give up two offensive rebounds. Very rarely will the Aces miss that next shot. And nobody does that better than Las Vegas. Mitchell right back to the rim. And she'll go to the line. Oh, Tiffany Mitchell is looking aggressive here early. Mitchell already with six points. I think Tiffany Mitchell feels pretty comfortable with Plum on her and look to see her taking him at her every time defensively they are matched up. Mitchell is an 89% free throw shooter. Got inserted into the starting lineup right around the halfway point of the season. This is her 11th start. He, by the way, knows Asia Wilson well. It's Chapman and Kelsey Mitchell have a quick conversation. Asia Wilson, one of the stars for Las Vegas. And Tiffany Mitchell played college ball for a couple seasons in South Carolina. Yep, we have the blood roll coming out now, so. I like that, the blood roll. Infection control. Is Infection it's control. The, official official, yeah. <laughs> the Australian terminology is the blood rule. <laughs> you want to take the uh, suit off, get a little more casual, the blood rule. You can schedule the care you need online and anytime with GetStVincentCare.com. You can choose a time that's right for you at a location near you. Officials, which, by the way, Cheryl Flores, Tim Green, and Kevin Sparrock is your officiating crew here tonight. Catching some blood on the jersey of Tiffany Mitchell. Eric Huber, the trainer, taking care of it. And Mitchell calmly sinks a pair. Tiffany Mitchell averages around nine points a game. She's up to eight already in the first quarter. She's up to Tamara Young. She's had a couple of baseline shots here in the first quarter. Aja Laney, who started most of the year. This is a new role for her coming off the bench. Feeds it down into McCowan. And now Rogers back for Cambage. A Chanwa contest. And a late whistle will go against Natalie Achanwa. We saw Pokey Chapman begging the rookie center to get back because there's a little bit of arguing and then Fever were not back to contest this, and Achanwa had to bend from an awkward angle. You can see McCowan, she was pleading her case for a foul down the other end, but when the call doesn't go your way, as coach was calling her to get back because the Aces moved the ball up the floor so quickly. This is already Cambage's fifth and sixth free throw. She has eight points. See, Bill Lambeer, as this year has gone on, he has tried to stagger more often the minutes of Cambage and Asia Wilson, but ultimately these are two of the league's superstars, and they play a somewhat similar position. They're both bigs, although they get it done in different ways. This has been a balance, a bit of a challenge for them at times to figure out how to work with one another. Kelsey Mitchell is in. McCowan battling for it down there with Cambage. Got it and drew the foul. Little body check there from Cambage. But Tiara McCowan, she does a great job of getting in the paint when the shot's going up, getting into position to fight for that offensive rebound. Just a slight little bump there. That's all it takes. McCowan with four points and two rebounds here in the first quarter. 
free throw percentage has gone up as the year has transgressed. And here's a stat that really shows how impressive McCowan has been. Only Sylvia Fowles, MVP, former MVP, Neka Gumake, a former MVP, and Jockwell Jones have both more points per game and rebounds per game than Tierra McCowan. Cambage is right up there as well, but McCowan has her by just a notch in the rebound category. And I'm going to say that was a block by McCowan, just in, couldn't really see from this angle, but I'm sure Tiffany Mitchell will be putting her hand up for that one. This is Kelsey out to a Chanwa. Now that's like a layup for Natalie Chanwa these days. And that's her bread and butter right there. How good the Fever are in the mid range. A Chanwa mm -hmm. and Dupree are two of the very best in the league in those positions. Sometimes you hear, as the analytics talk has gone up a bit, people saying that mid range jump shot isn't the best shot. Here's McCowan giving Mitchell some help down there, and certainly did. Got in there with the deflection. But if you've got players who are good at the mid-range jump shot, then it is a good shot. Oh, most definitely. And uh, just going back to McCowan, you know, her free throws are going to become so important for the team because she is going to get fouled a lot. So if she can get that percentage of her free throws up and above the 80, it's going to be to the, obviously, down the track. When, it, when games get close and it comes down to free throws, she can knock those down. Kelsey Mitchell knocks down a three for Indiana. The shot clock winding down. Well, it's been a terrific first quarter of offense for the Fever. 58% from the floor. They've worked this lead up to 14 points. Las Vegas is not only the best defensive team in the league, they've got the best defensive rating of any team over the last four years. But the Fever picking it apart here in the first quarter. Well, they've got great ball movement. They've they're pushing the ball in transition offense. They're swarming in defense. Everything's aligning right now. These have knocked down a pair of threes, 58% from the floor. They've hit all five free throws. It's hard to be much better than that, especially when you consider the opponent. Mitchell pulls up. Can't get the roll. McCowan's put back won't fall either. But it's a 29-point first quarter for Indiana. They've got a 14-point lead. One of the top teams in the league, the Las Vegas Aces. You're watching Fever Basketball tonight on My Indy TV 23. Pokey Chapman probably couldn't have drawn up that first quarter. Any more to her liking. The Fever up by 14 points after one for Bankers Live Fieldhouse. Not only clicking on the offensive end, Las Vegas, who is the third best offense in the league, is 4 of 17 from the floor. That's 24%. This really goes back to Seattle, where the Fever held the storm under 30% in that game. It's been a masterful five quarters for Pokey Chapman's bunch on that end. Laney dips inside and gets the finish. You know, I think it also is... It correlates with how they come out defensively and that intensity that they bring to make it hard for their opponents, like I said, to get an open shot, to get easy fast breaks. Work for three. That falls and everything is falling for Indiana here so far. I bet there's a lot of fist bumping, high fiving. Dancing going on the sideline right now with the players on the bench. You probably wish you were back over there with the <laughs> bench. Try to take you away as Wilson's jump shot won't fall. She looks very frustrated right now. She only played five minutes in that first quarter, and she rarely touched the ball. And we saw the swarming defense when they tried to feed it into her. Dupree, backdoor pass for a Chanwa. Even when that shot isn't falling, the ball movement. Near perfect for the Fever as Plum tees up a three. And that's what they're capable of doing. In fact, Vegas is the best three-point shooting team in the league at 38%. It's their first shot from distance to fall. Here's Cam Beige checking back in after about 90 seconds of rest, so Pokey Chapman will counter. Sierra McCowan. 
for coming into, into today's game. Plum was shooting at 35% from the three-point line. Mitchell getting by. Plum draws the foul, and those are the top two scores in the history of college basketball going at it. Plum, who is first out of Washington. And that was a smart play then by Kelsey Mitchell. You can see her just step inside as Plum was caught behind her. She just maneuvered her body inside and kind of initiated the contact, but that's a smart play. That's Indiana carrying over that defensive efficiency from Sunday. The opposite's been true here for Vegas. The top defense in the league allowed 98 to Minnesota in their last game. And now have allowed the Fever into the mid-30s here early in the second quarter. We talk about a strange game that was against Minnesota. They got down by 20, then they got themselves back in the game and end up losing by 20 up points. Melissa <laughs> dips inside, an awkward move. I've never seen a 360. <laughs> Here's Laney. She's open. Can't connect. Wilson had 39 points in the first matchup of these two teams. She's been held scoreless here so far. Steps back on McCowan. That fake shot won't fall. Elijah Wilson now 0 of 4 from the floor. Now Cam Cambage has played well. If you can keep one of those two off their game, you at least like your chances to have a shot at the end. And when you're playing offense like this... Well, Wilson, to me, just seems to be trying to force it right now just to get herself in the game. But great defense by Tierra McCown. It was we see her with that offensive rebound. Lizzie is trying to plead her case, saying, I was standing straight up. I was vertical, but I'm sure the replay will give us a good shot of that. It's now the second foul on Cam Beige. Well, Pat, I'm not quite sure if... Uh, I think Liz has a bit of a case to plead there. Maybe they say they got her. She got her with the hip. I must admit, I was purely looking at her, at her hand. So. See what she thinks. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell you what she thinks. Off camera. <laughs> Jackie Young has checked back in for the Aces. I just have to add, Liz Cambridge was a teammate of mine back in 2010 at the World Championships. So we go back a little ways. Cambridge backing in, and McCowan with the rebound. Fellow Australians. Oi, oi, oi. Mitchell, step back three. Oh, it was halfway down, but McCowan right there to clean it up. Probably one of the easiest rebounds she's ever going to get. This time it's just tripping herself up. Well, Bill Lambeer looking at a 22-point deficit. The fever has been near perfect. Las Vegas has to regroup midway through the second. Get the newest Fever gear at FeverTeamStore.com or in person here at Baker's Live Fieldhouse. Tonight's game night special, 30% off on all Fever jerseys. Indiana Fever game night special available now at FeverTeamStore.com. Perhaps that applies to a custom team of a Lockwood jersey if you want one. <laughs> Another block then by McCowan. As we look at her stats, so far she had 10 points. She's already got seven rebounds. She's looking on track to maybe be that 19th person in the WNBA history to get that 2020 points and rebounds. Wilson goes back to work and gets the roll here for the first time tonight. Wilson now one of five, has two points and one rebound in eight minutes played. Back in for McCowan. This is Carolyn Swords who's in for the first time. Mitchell, a straightaway three. She gets it. You could, what's so good now to watch the Indiana Fever offensively is they're looking for McCowan. The first half of the season, they were not. But I think with McCowan's confidence and wanting the ball, they're looking to get that ball in every time. As we see another great defensive play. 
Burke left it just too far for Kelsey Mitchell. One of the few things that has not gone right, and yet you can still see Pokey Chapman right there applauding the thought and the energy. Those are the kind of turnovers you're okay with as a coach. Most definitely, because you're trying to push the tempo. Potentially, you could have got a fast break then, easy two-point basket. I mean, Kelsey Mitchell is quick, so but she wasn't that quick to fetch that ball down. The deflection there by Kennedy Burke. Well, just nothing has been easy for Las Vegas so far. And every single time they, they're either swarming, they're getting deflections, they've got hands in the faces on every shot. Wilson from the foul line, and now she's hit a pair. You know how dangerous she is. The Fever know all too well. She had a career high against Indiana earlier this year. You have to close that gap a little bit on her. She was the number one overall pick in 2018. Kelsey Mitchell, the two pick. Here's the third pick from the 2019 draft. Wilson showing us her dribbling skills as the Fever don't stop her. Well, that move right there is exactly why you'll see Asia Wilson win an MVP before her career is done, and maybe multiple of them. I mean, the number of players that can put the ball on the floor and do that. Laney tries a corner three. Counter the rebound. She goes right back up. Well, that timeout has definitely worked in Bill Lambe Lambia's favor. The, the Aces have responded. Wilson's getting herself into the game offensively now. You can just feel the momentum swinging a little bit here. Right on cue, Kelsey Plum knocks down a three. And Indiana. So it jumped out to a 14-5 start to the quarter. Has allowed the last seven in the way of Las Vegas. It's a 16-point lead with Bill Lambeer's group here for the first time tonight. Feeling some momentum. Aces have rattled off seven in a row. Indiana taking a timeout. Their lead still at 16, but Asia Wilson... Has found her rhythm after missing her first four. You look at just the athleticism a move like this takes. Going at Dupree and the finish. Wilson all of a sudden with six points. And that was even being forced to go to her right, which is, is not her preferred hand. So an even better finish for her. Mitchell turns around. Plum with a pull-up three. She's hit a pair. That one jumps out on her, and Tiffany Mitchell has the rebound for Indiana. Kelsey Plum did not start tonight. She's coming off a zero-point game in ten minutes against Minnesota. She's already knocked down a pair of threes as Dupree turns around that el other elbow. That one works for Indiana. Less dribbling, more passing, and it's looking much better out there offensively for the Fever. Ten assists for Indiana as they near halftime. That's a really good number. Fever averaged 17 per game this season. Here, the Aces have not lost three in a row all season. If they lost tonight, it would be their third straight. Plum, a corner three. Spoke about Jackie Young being a great facilitator for the Aces, and you can see her there working off the, the pick and roll. She could have potentially tried to have gone for that layup herself, but she's looking to bring her teammates into the floor. And Kelsey Plum knocking down a couple of threes already. She's looking for her. Hamby hands off to Swords. A nice pass. Swords couldn't finish. McCallan has the rebound. right now on the bench. So is Kayla McBride who's played just nine minutes so far. And the zone being played here by the Aces. You don't see the zone too often but the Indiana Fever has just destroyed it just then. Hamby on the other end hits a two. Wall movement has been at peak performance for the Fever here tonight and Tierra McCowan even getting it on the act. been inspired by the USA women's soccer team right there. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, you know, and that's 
another aspect of McCowan's game that has improved and the players are just cutting off her and she's finding them now. Back inside, McCowan draws a triple team. McCowan already with 10 points and 9 rebounds. She has become a double-double machine as a couple double-doubles in her last three games. Tammy does a great job coming off the bench for the Aces and upping the tempo. She averages 11 points, so they, they do need to keep her in check. Things are moving so well on the offensive end right now for Indiana. They're oftentimes, like you see a quarterback making a pass to a receiver who's not quite in that position yet. And you see that look from McCowan. They know they have that open space in front of her toward the rim. So Kelsey Mitchell take advantage of it a moment ago. And Kennedy Burke looking for her big down there on the last play. Indiana trying to find space in that zone, and Candace Dupree does. Hiding down there in the dunker position as it's referred to in practice. Kennedy Burke, she's got that long length. She's never out of a defensive play. In her first start, she had four blocks. Kennedy Burke, who has her first tonight and had a steal to open up action. Young inside looking for Wilson. It gets deflected, but back into the hands of Wilson. First, there's a loose ball foul on Las Vegas. Yeah, that, that defensive pos possession started off well with Tiffany Mitchell just really dogging Plum. And that is already the fifth foul on Las Vegas, so Indiana heads into the penalty. The Fever, by the way, have not committed a foul this quarter. We'd have to get Kevin Messenger to go through the, the record books to see when the last time that has happened. No fouls in the second quarter. One turnover in the first half for Pokey Chapman's group. They're out-rebounding the top rebounding team in the league. And go on and on here. Holding Las Vegas under 30% from the floor, which they did to Seattle on Sunday. And you can look at the percentages and say, well, you know, they didn't, they haven't shot the ball well, but it's because of the defensive pressure that the Indiana Fever are applying to their opponents tonight. Kelsey Mitchell's coming off the bench, 10 points in the first half. Wilson back to work in the post, that left-handed jump shot rolls in. Asia Wilson finding a little rhythm here in the second. Erica Hamby is one of a handful of players who are up, I think, for most improved player. Erica Wheeler is one of them. We've only seen Wheeler for seven minutes so far tonight. Odyssey Sims. Leilani Mitchell also in the conversation. It's off to Dupree. She uses the fake baseline jump shot. Looks like Soles was holding Tierra McCallan's arm while she's trying to grab that rebound. Indiana in the penalty, so McCallum will go to the free throw line. Designated area. He and Pokey Chapman are probably at the closest. We're going to see them standing next to each other tonight. In a pretty mild mannered Bill Lambeer at least so far. Cowan now 5 of 5 from the free throw line. We just caught a glimpse then of assistant coach Kelly Schumacher on the sideline there next to Bill Lambert. Schumacher was a member of the Indiana Fever here in my first year in 2005. Now Kelly Rain. Plum back to Wilson. <laughs> the 
mismatch here with Dupree and McBride. That's a good shot to take, though. They'll take that every time. Plum on the attack back for Hamby. She'll line up a three. Not in rhythm, though. About six seconds between the clocks. Consider this. Indiana allowed Seattle to score 54 points in four quarters on Sunday. The Beaver could top that total with a bucket here in the first half. Down to two seconds. Laney from the corner. Wouldn't fall for her. That love from half court. That won't fall. And it's a 20 point lead for the Fever at halftime. Their highest scoring first half of the season. And by a large margin, Indiana nearly perfect on both ends of the floor. They take a large lead into the break. Halftime coverage coming up in a moment. You're watching Indiana Fever basketball in a game they need. They've come out strong on my Indy TV 23. to be happier than that little girl is here at halftime. Some french fries, a 20-point lead. Nice Tuesday night out here at Bankers Live Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. And the Fever, who need a win tonight, have put together maybe their best first half of the entire season. Alongside Tully Bevilacqua, I'm Pat Boyd. We talked about Tierra McCowan at the beginning of this show, at the beginning of this broadcast, and she has been excellent so far in the middle, battling a couple of the league's best. Well, she has 12 points and 11 rebounds at the half. And you can see that every single possession, when she is out there on the floor, the Fever players are either looking to pass it into her, and defensively we see her being an influence as well, blocking shots and just making the Aces have to think twice about what they're doing when they get into the paint. It's a 20-point lead for the Fever. We saw, though, Las Vegas overcome a deficit like this in their last game. You imagine these first few minutes of the third quarter are important. Well, the Fever have been known to come out a little sleepy after halftime. So, you know, they really need to, need to put the foot down. Just don't let the Aces have any chance of coming back into this game. Not like they did against Minnesota. But I'm sure Pokey Chapman, she's probably said a, a few words to rev them up and get them going. You can imagine Bill Lambeer did a little bit of the he, same. He probably that. said a few words to rev them up, get them going too. In that Las Vegas <laughs> locker room. Let's take a look now at your first half stats for Indiana. It's hard to pick one that you don't like, or maybe even the one you like the best, but this field goal percentage, this is back-to-back -back opponents. They're holding under 30%. Let's start there. The Fever have been excellent on defense. Well, I really like that 45% field goal percentage. And you can see one of our better shooting from beyond the arc tonight, four of nine. But you can see our, the number of three-point shot attempts have become lower because it's not a high percentage shot for us, that mid-range game, or getting it into the paint. And a look at the scoring leaders for the first two quarters. Well, Tierra McCowan going against the MVP runner-up last year, and you can safely say she is at bare minimum holding her own. 12 points for McCowan. She leads all scores as we start the second half of play. Indiana needs a win tonight to be assured that they are still in the playoff hunt. McCowan, who had a double-double in the first half, right back to work. She's gotten the foul. Well, right away, first play out of the gate, there was a pick and roll up the top with McCowan. She didn't get anything. She rolled. She drew the defense. She found the stuff on the low block. And what we're seeing more of is that putting the ball on the floor, and she's finishing off there nicely for the bonus. Christy Sides. Must be ecstatic right now seeing her knocking down those free throws. Seven of seven for McCowan. They look back into Cambage and McCowan had her locked up the moment she caught it. But the point you were making earlier, she's done an excellent job of staying out of foul trouble as the year has gone on. It's just her second foul. This 23 point lead matches Indiana's largest. Las Vegas had cut it to 16 midway through the second. There's Tamara Young on Burke. Tough shot through the foul. See the coach not liking that call. 
Yeah. So you can see Tamara Young just really being aggressive, getting into the paint with middle penetration there. It's so important when you're Indiana and you've got this lead to come out in the third quarter and at least match the energy of the other team. Because you know, we talked about it at the top of the broadcast, this game means a ton to Las Vegas as well. In fact, they're in danger of slipping out of one of those top four spots. But Chicago is right on their heels. Like we said, coming out of, out of halftime, being down by as many as they were, all and there wouldn't have been too happy as we see. Young again, being aggressive to the basket. And she's picked up a pair of fouls here on Kennedy Burke on Las Vegas' opening possession of the third quarter. And you can see uh, Burke's case there. Well, I'm not too sure about that call. Kennedy Burke was vertical. If anything, it's a no call. Tamara Young, who was empty on her last trip. Just one of two there, and Mitchell comes in. Those guards crashing the boards well for the Fever. Wheeler played just seven minutes in that first half. Her initial rotation, Pokey Chapman liked what she saw from some of that second unit and kept riding the hot hand. Mitchell on the baseline, a fadeaway jump shot, Tiffany, Tiffany Mitchell. Tiffany Mitchell's elevation on that jump shot is amazing. She does a good job of controlling her body as she floats in the air. Indiana, who did not commit a foul in the second quarter, has been charged with three in the opening minute 14 of the third. Fever have to be careful now. You don't want to get into that bone situation too early. And in fact, the fourth on Indiana. Wow. In just 114. So Vegas could go into the penalty if they get a foul here. And Vegas can hit that, but Indiana probably okay with that type of shot attempt. I was going to say, that's the first three-point attempt we've seen her put up tonight. And not a high percentage shot for her, but you can't leave a wide open. Mitchell working on Young. The defense there from Las Vegas. Indiana shooting 47% from the floor, 44% from three. Had their best offensive first half of the season tonight. Young going to work. Oh, Candace Dupree with the defense, and Young finished through it. Wow, that was a tough shot by Wilson to finish. You can see the good defense by Dupree. Now Dupree trying to answer. Dupree with nine points in the first half. Wilson working down hard there. She wants that ball. Burke came in to help and was called for the foul. So Kennedy Burke all of a sudden has picked up four, three of them here in the third quarter. And just like that, the Aces are into the penalty. See that tough finish there from Asia Wilson. And as Indiana tries to double her, Burke gets her hand caught in the cookie jar there. And Kennedy Boat didn't need to reach in then. Candace pretty much had Wilson in a good position, turning around for a fading jump shot. Gonna have some discipline sometimes defensively. Not sometimes, a lot of the times. Major Wilson now with 13 points, six rebounds. They need a good possession here. Debris backing her way in the fadeaway jump shot. Wilson has a couple of inches on Debris, so that's forcing her to have to lean back a little further on that shot. Good position for Cambage. It's an offensive foul. Luke Cambage is showing the kangaroo hops just then. Not happy with that call. And it is Lambeer. An official ruling that she got her elbow up. And there you see the contact to the chin of 
McCowan, and that does not matter if she is in the restricted circle there. That no, that is uh, an automatic foul there for the offense. But you can clearly see, see on that re replay, which that elbow did come around, and McCowan just still holding her jaw right now. Well, you understand why Cambage is frustrated, but that type of contact is an automatic foul. It's called every single time if the official sees it. Been a point of emphasis over the last handful of years. Contact above the shoulders is not a basketball move. Now, Fever just missed a great high-low opportunity just then with McCowan getting good position down low. Wheeler on the attack, leaves it back for Tiffany Mitchell. That hit off the side of the backboard. Mitchell got it back. Wheeler will have to fire and hit. <laughs> Looking up to the skies is Pokey Chapman on that one. He'll take it. Wilson has an answer. Still, Indiana has held serve here in the third quarter. 7-7 is the margin in the quarter. Well, the Aces can't afford to just trade baskets with the Indiana Fever. They've got to get some stops themselves to get back into this game. Dupree, that's her spot. <laughs> Cameron Young cut off by Dupree. Inside for Cambage. Good position. There's Cambage now at a double figure. She's got 11. Stuhl reminds you a bit of when New Orleans had that experiment on the NBA side with Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. Two of the top bigs in the league. Tiffany Mitchell a three. You almost sense the two at times have to trade off possession. Pull up. Cody Chapman just wanting the offense to settle down now, get a good shot, the best shot they can get from this offensive set. McCowan goes around Cambage. Cambage got a piece. Now it's Young going coast to coast. Young leads it back. Pretty fine to Tamara Young, who couldn't finish. It's all happening right now. Bodies are flying everywhere. The Fever have an opportunity right now. It's five on four. Beautiful five. Dupree. Yes. That's McCowan and a foul. Of all the players to leave wide open. Candace Dupree draws out Cam Beige and finds that open seam for Tierra McCowan. She's headed to the line. Just two home games remain on the Fever 2019 schedule. The next comes Thursday night with a Fever host, the L.A. Sparks. Check out seating options and grab your ticket at thefeverbasketball.com slash tickets. The Fever needed either a win or a New York win over Phoenix to keep their playoff hopes alive. Right now, maybe hoping to get a little greedy, maybe getting both of those results to go the right way. Right now, New York is up by just one on Phoenix, 54-53. to 53. But if Indiana could get a win, and if New York could give the Fever some help, and New York not totally out of the picture either. That gap right now is three and a half games. They could shrink it to two and a half. Stranger things have happened. You never know. You just got to take care of business now yourself and then just hope, obviously, some results go in your favor. But I don't know, Pat. I don't think I've ever seen this stat for the fever when you look at the turnovers. Only one turnover at this point in the game. Some weave action going on now, getting some movement around the perimeter. Mitchell, she'll line up a three. And oh connect. We'll give that assist to Natalie Achanwa for that screen. Wide open. You can't give Kelsey Mitchell that good of a look. She's got 13 points here tonight. She's come off the bench and give her credit. She's played well in now her last three games. Mitchell had 13 points in Indiana's win at Seattle. The Fever have done a great job of getting a nice spread of scorers. Three players in double figures with a couple more close to it. 
We look at the aces very much relying on Wilson and Kane Beige right now. McCowan sits down 13 rebounds to go along with 18 points for Tierra. She is now 10th all time in rookie rebounds at 258. Eighth on that list and just six away, which isn't out of the question mm -hmm. for her to do it tonight, is Asia Wilson from last year. Shanae Gumake also had 264. What a revelation Tierra McCowan has been as this season has gone on. Mitchell, the pull up through the foul. Again, you see that elevation on her jump shot. Makes it hard for defenders to gauge when to contest her because she can just stop on a dime and just elevate. You really sense that this is a player here too that is really benefiting from health at this point in the year because that has something that has been something she's not always had late in the season. Mitchell now with 11.6 rebounds and three assists. There are a lot of stat lines that Pokey Chapman has to love. And you're wondering if that big run for Las Vegas was going to come. It hasn't yet. In fact, Indiana's outscored the Aces by four here in the third. They made a push at the start of this third quarter, as you see from there, with another three. And that's a, a sure way to be able to reel that deficit in by hitting a few of those. Chanwa attacking Swartz, draws the double, shot clock into single digits. Laney gets inside, leaves it back, Natalie Chanwa, she's got it! Well, even late in the shot clock, the ball movement, the poise from the fever. I'm not sure we have seen them play at this level on offense this year. Wilson spinning back in the post, that's a tough look, she leaves it short. This time it's Natalie Chanwa on the defensive end. Now, I talked about that swarming defense at the beginning. She had three players that were digging, that were filling the gap. <laughs> Showtime Kelsey Mitchell with another three-pointer. She's now made four from beyond the arc tonight is everything. Falling for the fever, Kelsey Plum. She's had a nice game. Plum now has hit four from distance. And she's got 12, but you hit on it. The status quo for Indiana is a win. And right now, Las Vegas is trading baskets. On the balance, the Fever have gotten it done tonight on the offensive end. McCowan has 18. Mitchell with 16. Tiffany Mitchell has 12. Candace Dupree with 9. Kennedy Burke with 7. And when you combine that with what's been a really strong defensive effort, this is right up there with the most complete I think we've seen Indiana play all season. Some very good signs, a lot of positive signs coming now towards the end of the regular season. And he back inside, put it behind Achanwa. And Mobunga battling forward through the jump ball. It is three on the shot clock if the Fever win it. It's fascinating how a little bit of confidence can just kind of find its way to permeate throughout this entire roster. That looked like a short turnover just then, but Steph Mabunga keeping it alive with the jump ball and a good chance to win this tap. Indiana will need a quick shot if she does. Will Embeer will bring Liz Cambage back in. Carolyn Tour. Bogey Chapman was straight away. She can't get her in on this one. Uh, they want to put her in for Mavunga. Well, initially I was going to say maybe a tap to Nat. Nat a Chamwa, but it uh, makes it a little bit tougher when you've got a Cambage on you who has about is it four or five inches. Well, maybe worth a look. We'll see Mavunga. She's going to try that right to it. Chan when it was taken away. New York was ready for it. Straight away into Kane Bay. He's got the size on Mavunga, but can't finish. Right, 
the count. And Kay Beige is very strong when she's backing it down, but it took all of Mavunga's might to stay in the contest. Did a good job not fouling. And he draws the double. Here's Tiffany Mitchell off target. And he pulled down the rebound. A loose ball foul. We'll go against Las Vegas. here in the third quarter, and Indiana has committed two turnovers. I'm just going to go ahead and knock some wood here and find some because <laughs> really, it always generally happens when you talk about players and free throws. That's what normally happens when you say how well they've been shooting the ball. One more coming for Laney. The Fever, by the way, as a team, take pretty good care of the ball. 14 turnovers a game on the season is third in the WNBA. So when you take care of the basketball, you're making your shot. It means less opportunities for the opposition to run the ball and transition themselves. And they've done a good job of transition defense tonight. Vegas plays at the second fastest pace in the league. You can tell they've been taken out of their element. Hamby on the putback draws the foul. Natalia Chan was called for that. Probably could have raffled that one between either of them. We wonder here for Las Vegas if Kayla McBride's 100 percent. She's played just 11 minutes here tonight, and McBride is an all-star. And 0 for 3 from the floor. Zero uh, points, 11 minutes. That's their top perimeter player, and she is one of the league's best three-point shooters. So you would certainly think Hambeige on the putback had it blocked from behind. You would certainly think Lambeer would like to use her as you're trying to mount a comeback. The three-point shot's the quickest way to do that. When you look at her averages, she, she does average, as you see. Liz showing her defensive skills, a bit of dribbling. Back into Cambage, and Cambage draws the foul on McCowan. And that is the fourth on Tierra. A fairly similar play to one where Cambage was called for the offensive foul, but this time she didn't extend that elbow. Asia Wilson averaged 44 points between them on different teams last year. They're averaging 32 this year. So that has been an adjustment for those two as they continue to figure out how to play together. And Vegas at 19 and 11 on the season. They dropped two in a row. So they've been one of the top teams this year. But I think if you're Bill Lambeer is the promising aspect of this. Still kind of in a feeling out phase in year number one, and yet your team is eight games over. But certainly he can't love how his team is playing headed in near the end of the season. I would rather be going into the end of the regular season with some momentum leading into the playoffs. Stephen has to protect the town here a little bit. She is on full foul. They don't want her to get five. Up look for Laney. McCowan had the rebound, and Olsen, rather, Rogers ripped it out. And Wheeler is going to get a whistle with a loose ball foul down low. A couple more free throws to come now for Kane Bage. This quarter has been slow. It's been methodical. It's had a lot of fouls. But if you're the fever, that is probably by design. Really anything to keep Las Vegas in that up pace offense out of its rhythm. And Vegas, who is second in the league in pace of play, really has not had the chance to run. You mentioned lack of turnovers and a huge reason for that. And the turnovers that the Fever have had have not been of the live ball, fast break variety. It's those you can live with as a coach. And here comes the substitution. You don't want to risk the key getting that fifth foul with only 13 seconds left on the clock at the end of the third quarter. And Beige is six of nine from the free throw line tonight. 77% free throw shooter.
Mitchell turns the corner, lofts it up. That won't fall. Achanwa got the rebound, and Achanwa coming up hopping. And an offensive foul called, or a loose ball foul called, which means Aces will go back to shoot another pair of free throws. Really worst case scenario here if you're the Fever. Take another look at Natalie Achanwa and how that ankle well, yeah, drops there. Yeah. yeah, and you can see that little roll on her right foot. Watch that right ankle. And that insult to injury, it sends Las Vegas to the line. McCallum back onto the court to replace the injured Achanwa. She needs to understand with four seconds to go, she can't get, in a, get into a body in that match. Wheeler has to get rid of it. It's off target. Ace to score the final four in the third, but the Beaver, who took a 20 point lead into the quarter, leaves the third with a 20 point lead. Indiana looking for their 11th win of the season over Bill Lambeer, the Las Vegas Aces. Beaver holds serve in the third. It's a 20-point lead as we head to the fourth from Bankers Live Fieldhouse. Beaver who have been in the midst of some of their best play on the defensive end in their past couple of games, holding Las Vegas, who averages 82 points per game, well below those averages here as we head to the fourth. Still haven't seen much of Kayla McBride. She's played just 11 minutes. Hamby tries to spin around Laney, couldn't get the roll. She battles for it, and Wheeler wins the battle. Great start defensively, and talking about McBride, she's someone that averages 30 minutes a game. So, you know, I'm with you on that. Maybe something is up that we don't know about. McCowan dribbled it off her foot, and it's Indiana's fifth turnover of the night. And whilst uh, the Indiana Fever are in the driver's seat right now with a 20-point lead, you can't take the foot off the pedal. Because we've seen just recently how quickly the Aces can come back from a 20-point deficit, as the Fever have done themselves. Las Vegas is the top three-point shooting team in the league, the third-best offense and the league's best defense centering tonight. Certainly got the horses to get back in this one, but time is dwindling down as Wheeler's three off target. Ace is trying to push tempo. They turn it over on their first two possessions here of the fourth. As we see Edgar Wheeler taking out the cameraman. Shout out to, to Micah there. Doing a great job. Floor level. That's her job. I wonder if she has to get new glasses from time to time over there. <laughs> Ten second shot. Ten seconds left on the shot clock as we see Laney knocking down that jump shot. Well, one area of the fever have been so strong tonight. When that shot clock has been down into single digits, the fever have not panicked. They've gotten good looks, and they've knocked down the tougher ones they've gotten as well as Hamby springs free underneath. One of the rare occasions that one of the Aces players has gotten wide open with an uncontested layup. Dupree steps into a long two. She's got it. Candace Dupree, her first scoring of the second half. She's got 11 on the night. And Indiana will gladly just trade baskets here with Las Vegas. Hamby again on a backdoor cut. Losing vision again then on Hamby. Well, like you said, the Aces, they've got to get some stops with these baskets. Right now it's playing in the favor of the Fever to, to trade with them. 
Dupree. Got Wilson into the air. Pretty move and finishes. Dupree needs to average 15 a game to catch Katie Smith for fifth all time. She's got 13 tonight. And if she does not do that this year, she will certainly do that in a game or two to start off next season. The way she's moving out there on the floor. She did celebrate her 35th birthday this year, but she looks more like a 25-year-old running around right now. Her game is just so well suited for somebody up into the mid-30s now. just need a few extra ice packs once you get above that mark. Spoken from somebody who's been there. <laughs> you just got to lie in that tub. Wilson had it blocked by Mitchell from behind. Kelsey Mitchell getting into the defensive action here tonight. I don't think she even had to leave her feet for that one. Mitchell on the attack gets inside, draws the double. That's right, Kelsey. You could see her pointing to a wide-open Dupree out on the perimeter. And you have to understand, when you're driving in the paint, you've got Cambage and Wilson. You're going into the forest there. Dupree. McCowan, she's been so strong tonight. Give her two more. She's got 20. And that's just great teamwork right there, and it's been that all night for the Indiana Fever. Coaches will be very happy. You're always expecting more, but you can see them on the sideline right now. That sideline on the other end tells a different story. Kennedy Burke, who got the start, seven points so far in 19 minutes. Aces were 19 and 9 and were in serious contention of the league's number one overall seed, which the way they see things now is Mitchell lines up a three. The way they see things now, those first two spots get you a double buy. It is such an advantage. A single buy to the third and fourth positions in Chicago will be tied with Las Vegas. After tonight as Campage couldn't finish on a second effort does. Frustrated there. She probably could have had a foul called against McCowan on the drive initially. And then frustrated about m missing that layup. And then he out to do free. She's shuffled her feet. The 22 point lead, 549 for the FIBA to close this one out on my DTV 23. Play of the game is brought to you by Kroger and Tierra McCowan, who's done a lot of scoring, a lot of rebounding. Come up here, dishing it off to Kennedy Burke. This is one aspect of her game that you'd love to see develop. You know she's going to draw those double teams with the sheer size of McCowan, and we, she can find her teammates, especially on back cuts like that. It makes her even more dangerous. As you can see her there contesting that shot, there's one more rebound. She's at 15. And she gets to that 2020, and she was one rebound shy of against Seattle. 20 points, 15 rebounds. Here, McCowan, how do you respond to a 22 and 19 game? How about 20 and 15? Debris, the spin. McCowan, the rebound, another board, and two more. She's got 22 and 16. When you add in some offensive rebounds as well to the mix, she's got a good chance of, of getting that number tonight. Lambia spoke about how, oh, great pass in by Dupree. Lambia talked about how his team was tired and how they needed to get some practice in, and you can see Wilson knocking the two down. But a lot of teams can all say that themselves, but you've just got to find that energy on the road. Somehow, even if you're not feeling it, you've got to fake it sometimes, and then that can bring you up to where you need to be. But every team deals with it during the season. I wonder if that's what McBride is dealing with. After a four-point game 
against Minnesota. She's played 11 minutes tonight. And they say there's nothing physically wrong. Mitchell got to the rim, put it up too long. You can hear the fans in the in the background then helping helping down with a shot count. Wilson spinning around. Burke hangs. That shot's too long. Wilson and Cambage have combined for 33, but it's taken 28 shots to get there. Tiffany Mitchell with a shot clock winding down. Mitchell can't get rid of it. The fever could do worse, though, than a shot clock violation at this point. And I think one thing you really have to give credit is Sierra McCowan's going to check out with 24 and 17. 22 and 19 against Seattle, 24 and 17 tonight. I'd love to see that smile from Big T as she heads to the bench. I think there's a lot of people on draft day that said, we think one day Tierra McCowan might be able to put up numbers like this. I'm not sure there's a ton of people, I'm talking nationally, that thought that might happen this year. Well, I'll take it a step further and say she has the, and I don't like the word potential, don't like to use it, but she has that ability to be one day the best center in the league. Well, it'll be fascinating to see where these two teams come along. As the county, see Shanice Johnson is out for the year with that knee injury, but still dressing the part. You know, and you, you don't want to kind of like always look too far ahead, but you know, you look to the future, to next season when you get Victoria back as well in the mix, and you know that's someone that can extend you way beyond out to like a. NBA four-point, you know, three-point line. Interesting to see the evolution of these two teams. Now, Las Vegas had to know they had a good shot at Cambage when they drafted, and they already had Asia Wilson. So, McCowan likely not on their radar, but McCowan was the third pick of this draft. Jackie Young, the first pick. Always interesting to see as the years go on how the drafts kind of evolve and who ends up... With the steals, Sierra McCowan, 24 points, 17 rebounds. Indiana walking away with a win. Tonight's American Red Cross difference maker of the game. A lot of contributors, but this choice is clear. Sierra McCowan, 24 points, 17 rebounds. She is just putting up high-popping numbers as the season has gone on. Oh, and let's add five blocks to the mix. Can't forget that. Don't forget that one assist as well. There was a very good assist. Mm -hmm. Indiana going to move to five and four on the season post also. And you talk about that coming at a good time for Indiana. I think Kofi Chapman alluded to that. The chance to just kind of hit the reset button a little bit. A few extra days to get some practice. Work on a few things. Kind of shift in the way the offenses have now have been tailored to go through McCallum. You can give Natalie Achano a lot of credit in that process as well, as you see here McCowan. And it was so interesting watching her in some of those early practices. I mean, you could tell there was a lot at her, mm -hmm. and it came quick. And that is such a quick transition just from the college game to the pro game. And you can see the wheels really turning in her head the first five or six games of the season. And now that things have gotten comfortable, she feels like she understands the offense and what Pokey Chapman's looking for is there's Paris Key who's checked in. You have seen her flourish at just a remarkable level as the season has gone on. It's like she just took a nice deep breath and just relaxed. And, uh, as you can see, Erica McCall getting in on the action there. Getting herself a block shot coming off the bench. She brings high energy when she gets out on the floor. Good chance for some playing time for the likes of Paris Key, Erica McCall. Kennedy Burke is back in for the Fever. Stephanie Mokwinga along with Benajah Laney. And this 
desperate here. We know how to play with each other. And so it's not uncommon for them to come out and, and look like they've been, I mean, they, when, you, at, when you are at practice, you generally find the starting five up against the second five units. So they all feel pretty comfortable out there the with one another. There. And the chemistry is there. Carolyn Swords, two down at two. The Fever have had games where they've scored more than this, but they've held their opponent under totals lower than this. But off the top of my head, you'd be hard-pressed, I think, to find a more complete game when you consider opponent and when you consider the importance of this one. If the Fever lost tonight and Phoenix won, Indiana would be eliminated from playoff contention. So they needed a win to guarantee themselves another game in terms of having a shot at that final playoff spot. This has just been terrific from start to finish. Well, they set the tone from the very first possession, getting some stops. They haven't let up. And as you can see right now to the wire now, even with 30 seconds to go, just fighting. Grabbing all those loose rebounds. It does look like Phoenix is going to win over New York. They lead by 13 with two minutes left. Laney with a shot clock down to four. Straight away three. That won't go. Plum going coast to coast. They'll put Las Vegas into the 70s. But it's an emphatic win for the Indiana Fever, leading wire to wire by as many as 26 points tonight. And they coast to a 15-point win over Las Vegas, who has dropped their third in a row for the first time this year. They were the last team who avoided that third straight loss. The Fever and Tierra McCowan, who had 24 points, 17 rebounds. Since the All-Star break has had the look of a playoff-type team.